Friends, welcome to worship. We are Westbury United Methodist Church, a church for all people with more than enough love to go around. My name is Hannah. I'm your community pastor, and it's my joy to welcome you to worship at whatever time you're tuning in. Thank you for setting aside time to, to connect in community virtually, to worship our God, to be centered, recentered in who we are and whose we are. I know this, this is a season of Advent, of active waiting, and it's a season of, of waiting, waiting, waiting. So we have uh, heeded the wisdom of our local leaders here in Houston, and we have suspended in-person gatherings until further notice. We know that, um, that we're weary of waiting. I invite you in this, this season of Advent to lean into it to lean into it because our God is a God who doesn't wait on the sidelines, but our God is a God that hears our groans and our cries, our longings, and says, I hear you. I'm here with you in the waiting. So may, may in this season um, of waiting and of longing to gather in person, may the Spirit of God minister to you and to us and to the, greater, to the greater community in which we are a witness to God's peace and to God's justice and God's kingdom. So I invite you to check out our website. That'll be the place that you need to go to to see all the ways that you can connect in community virtually and, um, and keep up to date on the, the status of things. Um, that's the place to go to. So www.westbarryumc.org. You'll see there um, information around Sunday, December 13th with the family scavenger hunt that will be drive through. You'll see information that evening at 7 p.m., Christmas Under the Stars event that'll be a drive in in the parking lot. Um, you'll see information about um, how you can be part of blessing the children in our community our kids um, who go to Tinsley Elementary School in ways that you can uh, bless them with gifts this season. Also Thursday, December 17th, uh, we will be um, joining in spirit with our local Jewish neighbors in celebrating Hanukkah. So that will also be a drive-in event. So make sure you check out the website for information of how you can um, be connected and actively wait in this season of Advent together. We are so grateful for you and for your, your generosity, how you show up in community, how you are present to what God is doing in us, through us, beyond us. So thank you for how you participate in community these days. Thank you too for your gifts, for how you give generously to sustain the ministry of this church. So I invite you to look at the ways um, that you can give this week and ask God what it is God would have you stretch to give generously and, and help us finish this year financially strong. Friends, it is a joy to be in Christian community with you, to be one of your pastors. I love you. I pray for you every day. And it's my joy today to welcome you to worship. So let us worship our God together with joy. Our lists are long, even in this strange mess where we live these days. And we want to do it right. We want to be safe, but we want to be able to enjoy the season. We've got work to do to put right what has gone wrong, to heal what is broken, to mend the relationships, and to prepare for the company that will come. The prophet Isaiah reminded us that there is work to be done. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. When God comes in, then healing is to be found. But we need to make the way. We need to open the door into our lives. So, we light these candles as a sign of our faith that the God we worship is not far from us and that we can clear the way for that God to come and dwell with us. We light these candles in faith that company is coming. O oh, come, come, oh, come, come Emmanuel. Emmanuel.
join me in affirming our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, this is the moment in our service that we invite you to pass the peace of Christ with each other. In the season of Advent, of active waiting, it's so important that we that we remind each other of the signs of God's presence, of God waiting with us, and that we share the peace of Christ in the waiting. So I invite you to send a text, make a call, send an email or snail mail, let somebody know that you love them and you share Christ's peace together. Friends, Peace be with you. I'm Katie and this is Owen and we're gonna do the children's sermon today. I'm helping. Yes. This you're is the Advent we're doing. It's about candles. Hope, joy. Do you remember which love. one? Yeah. This one's joy. This one's joy, yeah. But last week we did hope. Yeah, do you want it? Let's go ahead and light that one. So we talked about hope last week. What is hope? 
Um, it's when we like we think of something and we and we want it to happen and so we're hoping we're hoping for good things to come, right? So even though everything is wonderful right now, or even if everything feels like it's bad right now, we know that we can hope for things in the future, right? Because Jesus who is here with us and always with us. It will also come and be with us again. So we have lots of things to hope for. And this kind of feels like Hanukkah. It kind of feels like Hanukkah because we're lighting candles. And that's another um, holiday where people light candles to remember about God and all of the things that God has it's done. Kwanzaa? Kwanzaa! Kwanzaa is another candle holiday. <laughs> yeah, where people light candles to remember the values. Like What's we're remembering one? different values. So they do that with Kwanzaa. What is this one? This one is peace. We're going to light that one this week. Um, Peace is when you're calm and you are not fighting or, and there's no anger yeah. with you. So you're at peace. Yes. And it's, I think it's going to burn out. You think it's going to burn out? We can always relight it. But yeah, so when you're at peace. Hope. But when you're <gasps> when you have peace, are you fighting with other people? No. No, right? Because you're peaceful, and that's something that the Bible talks about a lot. There's a lot of different stories about people who are at peace, and another part of at being at peace, because when people are fighting and things, a lot of times people fight because they're afraid, right? And that's something that the Bible reminds us a lot about. We don't have to be afraid. So even if things are dark, and even when we don't know what's coming next, that can be, kind of be scary, right? Well, if it's too dark, we just have to light a candle, and that problem solved. Yeah, we can just light a candle, and the problem solved, right? And we can, if it's really dark and we're afraid, we can also remember about the peace that Jesus gives us, so we don't have to be afraid anymore. Can right? I say a joke? Sure. What happens when Santa Claus's GPS doesn't work? I don't know what happens. It's a lost clause. That is amazing. Okay, are you ready to say the prayer with me? Yes. Don't blow fire. Okay. Dear God. Dear God. Thank you for giving us your son, Jesus. Thank you for giving us your son, Jesus. Thank you for reminding us about your peace. Thank you for reminding us about your peace. And that we do not have to be afraid. And that we do not have to be afraid. In your name we pray. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. A reading from Exodus. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. When all the people witnessed the thunder and lightning, the sound of the trumpet, and the mountain smoking, they were afraid and trembled and stood at a distance and said to Moses, You speak to us, and we will listen, but do not let God speak to us, or we will die. Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid, for God has come only to test you and to put the fear of him upon you so that you do not sin. Then the people stood at a distance while Moses drew near to the thick darkness where God was. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please join me in prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable and pleasing in your sight, O Lord, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I want to share with y'all that I am a huge Google fan. I am fully immersed in the Google ecosystem. Uh, if you have had to join a church meeting and it was done through Google Meet, uh, it was probably my fault. I'm the one trying to get all our staff and all our lay leaders to use Google Docs and Google Drive. Um, I'm all in with Gmail. Uh, Google Shared Calendars, I've been using it since it first started. It has uh, saved my marriage. Okay, that might be a bit far, but it is so helpful in coordinating schedules. Um, I have Chromebooks, I got Pixel phones, uh, but I'll share that of all the Google products, my favorite is Google Photos. 
Uh, Google Photos does all this artificial intelligence work, and you can search and sort by the oddest things. You can search for basketball, and it'll pull up all these photos and videos of basketball. You can search for the color orange, and it'll pull up different images where orange dominates. Um, and one of the most useful, and I will say a little bit scary features, is that Google is, does automatic facial recognition. And so you can search for photos of a person and it will pull up all the photos and videos you have of that person. Now, to improve the algorithm, uh, Google will often show two pictures of a person and ask, is this the same person? And that's a way that you can see the artificial intelligence working, the logarithm working. But every now and then, it whiffs. It doesn't match the same person. Uh, but there is one time Google Photos really completely missed. Um, I'm really not sure what part of their algorithm thought that this was a picture of my dad. Uh, it missed the race, it missed the age, it missed even whether this person was wearing glasses or not. Uh, it did get the same gender, so there's something for their AI. Uh, that one facial recognition miss in my experience, uh, it made me think about how we picture God. Uh, for most of us, if we grew up in the West, uh, our image of God in our mind is the Simpsons version of God. Uh, there is a bright blue sky, there are golden beams of sun all around, and God is exuding light all around. And yet when we read this passage from Exodus, when we read about the lightning and the thunder, the trumpet, the mountain smoking, and the thick darkness, we wonder, is this the same God? Are we dealing with a Google Photos recognition with how are they so different? Yet this clearly is a description of God in Exodus. Uh, the word Hebrew word awerfel is thick darkness. Sometimes it can be translated a thick cloud, but translators do, they're really good at their job. And the best English word for Arahel is thick darkness. Not just darkness, but thick darkness. Which makes me wonder, why do we more often associate darkness, thick darkness, with the absence of God rather than the presence of God? In the reading today, we actually heard the bookends, the beginning and the end, of probably the most famous passage of the Bible in all history, the Ten Commandments. You can test yourself later on whether you can name all ten by turning to Exodus 20 and reading the verses we skipped. Uh, today's reading gives you a freebie, the first commandment, you shall have no other gods before me. But we also hear in these words, how commandments are connected to relationship. God establishes with the Hebrew people a reason to trust and follow his commandments. I am the one who brought you out of Egypt, who delivered you from slavery. I have shown and demonstrated my love and commitment to you. Trust me and follow these commandments. Even if the neighbors are doing better than you, if they're driving nicer cars and taking more and better vacations, don't start worshiping their gods. Remember my love. Trust my commandments. You start to see how relationship connects with commandments. Uh, but we will we'll save preaching these foundational rules, these Ten Commandments, for another date. Just notice the emphasis from the beginning on relationship and commandments. Now, after God speaks the Ten Commandments to the people, there is what we call a theophany. A theophany is a physical manifestation of God's presence on earth. And in this theophany, we get a description of what it was like when God was physically here in glory. There is thunder, there is lightning, there is smoke and trumpets, and in most of our minds, when we read this description in Exodus of God's presence, this feels less like God 
and to me reads more like Mordor from the Lord of the Rings and the Eye of Sauron. And knowing how we might be scared and intimidated, Moses urges the people, do not be afraid. Until we read the passage ends where Moses is the one who enters the thick darkness where God was. Did you catch that? If you want to be close to God, if you want to get close to God, then God is found in the thick darkness. Last week, we stepped into darkness to find life and how life might be springing forth around us. This week, we are reminded that we need darkness in order to find God. Not, this is not the only place where God claims darkness as a home. We read it in Ezekiel. We read it in 1 Kings. It's scattered throughout the Old Testament. But let's pause and consider why we shun darkness, why we seek too often to extinguish darkness from our lives. When we think about the dark, our mind often drifts to what is hidden, what cannot be seen, what is unknown. We peer into the darkness and we imagine all sorts of danger. Everything from the chair leg that is threatening to stub our toe to the cockroaches that make their homes in our kitchens when we turn off the light to violent crime that might be lurking around the corner. But perhaps we deceive ourselves and we think of darkness as dangerous. We think of all the bad things that happened in the dark, but we forget that bad things don't only happen in the dark. Jane Brox is an author who documents the history of how humans have sought to bring light into our lives uh, in the book Brilliant, The Evolution of Artificial Light. And one thing she notes is that streetlights don't actually reduce crime. In fact, there was a large study in Illinois, she quoted, that showed a reduction in streetlights reduced crime and conversely increased crime during the day. And even when bad things do happen when it's dark, that doesn't mean darkness is evil. There is a rich branch of theology called apophatic theology or via negativa. This form of Theology gives us a picture and portrait of God by naming all the things that God is not. In other words, we can know God by what is hidden, by what is kept in darkness, what we cannot know about God. Uh, we can know God by knowing that God is not an idol, and God cannot be represented by anything carved with human hands. We know God by knowing that God is infinite. God is not bound by limits that mark our humanity. We know that God is not physical or material or constrained to one space, but rather God is spirit. And learning to build a life around what we do not know, well, that's a place we all find ourselves now. We know there's going to be a vaccine, but we don't know when we'll get it, or how effective it will eventually be. We know that there's community spread right now, but we don't know who among us has it and who doesn't. We know that someday, someday it will be safe to hug, to embrace, to pass the peace to each other in person, but we can't say if it will be next Easter, next summer, or next Christmas. In the midst of not knowing, in the midst of this felt darkness, the Bible makes a clear claim that God dwells in the thick darkness. And we are given an invitation to find God, to find security, to find safety, to find love within that thick darkness. Consider for a moment what can only happen in darkness. 
The most darkness I've ever experienced was when Susan and I had a chance to go spelunking or cave exploring with some guides. And that was an adventure. We were crawling through crevices and narrow spaces it is not for the claustrophobic. And I'm glad that this happened uh, 14 years ago because uh, I have grown somewhat and I may not fit into some of those tight spaces. Uh, but we got to this one point in the cave where the guide had us sit on a ledge and then told us to turn off our headlamps. That was truly pitch darkness. We could not see a single thing. Uh, I have never and probably never will experience darkness like that. And then the guide said, jump. Now, to be fair, one of the guides did go first, and we heard a splash. And I really cannot recollect, I cannot remember whether I went first or Susan went first. Uh, but that was a pure thrill, to jump into a vast unknown, into the dark, not knowing how far down things would be, not seeing where the water would be, and just trusting into the darkness. There is thrill to be found in darkness. Now, I'm going to offer a fair warning. Uh, this following clip may ruin your childhood memory, but have you ever seen Space Mountain, that indoor ride at Disney World and Disneyland? Have you ever seen it with the lights on? When you see Space Mountain, how it's conceived in the track with the lights on, it's not so scary. It looks like a very tame, mild roller coaster, and it is until you turn the lights off. When we learn to trust, even when we cannot see, we can discover joy, we can discover life, we can discover the presence of God. And what Exodus and these other passages of the Old Testament remind us is the idea of what we call dialectical theology, of holding two things that seem to be in a conflict together, that God is both light and darkness, that God is found in both light and darkness. And it is our faith that rejects any simple dualism, that wholly rejects and names darkness as evil and to be avoided. On the contrary, today's Bible reading suggests God is perhaps more easily found in the midst of thick darkness. And perhaps our own human experience may suggest the same. That in our lives, God is more easily found in thick darkness. This idea makes me think of the Rothko Chapel in our own city of Houston. It is a fascinating art installation. It's painted by an atheist and told to imagine a holy space. And this space, this octagonal space, is dominated by these 14 huge canvases painted with thick darkness. There's something about peering into these paintings, we will encounter the holy, something that we know within our human spirit. I think about the song uh, sung by the alternative rock band Death Cab for Cutie called I Will Follow You Into the Dark. The writer of the song uh, was 29 when he penned it, and he had never faced a significant loss in his life. And in penning it, he began to imagine what it's like to face death, to look into death, to approach death with a loved one, to ask how we will face the darkness that lies beyond life. And I think about our faith and what it teaches about darkness. There is comfort of knowing what our Bible teaches about thick darkness. That God is there. That if you seek God, that if you want to find God, you have to step into 
the thick darkness. And that's what we remember and ruminate in Advent. That despite the felt silence of God, despite the growing darkness of each day, God is still present. God has never left. And perhaps God is even more present when it's dark. Finding God means stepping into thick darkness. Finding God means knowing that even when we can't see a dang thing, God is there. Finding God is discovering that our faith is even more vibrant and alive when light is the dimmest. We don't have to wonder if God is there in the dark. We know God is there. And when that happens, we discover the thrill of finding and trusting that God is there in the darkness. The joy that comes with trusting in faith, that peace will come, trusting that healing will come, trusting that redemption will come, trusting that all our sacrifices we have made for God's kingdom and because of God's love, they will not be wasted because God's kingdom, it will come to earth, even if we must wait in the darkness. And when night comes, we do not need to fear because God is there. God is waiting. God is urging. And God is pleading for us to step forward and find God in the thick darkness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear God of all beings, too often these days we think of ourselves more than we should. So for this day we send our prayers out on behalf of others and not ourselves. May our prayers connect us to them through you, like gossamer floss threaded through a divine needle. I pray calm for all who are struck with terror every time they cough, or a loved one coughs, or someone passing them in the supermarket coughs. I pray healing for those sick with COVID. I pray rest for exhausted nurses, doctors, and other heroes I don't always think about, like the hospital laundry workers and cafeteria cooks. I pray comfort for the lonely. I pray rescue for the evicted. I pray solace for the grieving. I pray the gift of increased generosity in those who have more. I pray mercy for the incarcerated and all who love them. I pray fortitude for those who never ever thought they'd be homeschooling small children and are losing their minds. I pray wisdom for our leaders. I pray humility for the powerful. I pray compassion for clergy and counselors and everyone else who's doing emotional and spiritual triage for others and yet are also deeply affected by the pandemic in their own quiet ways. And for all of us, more joy, please. Holding these things together, we pray as your son Jesus taught. Our, Our Father, Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
May you find faith to step into darkness this week. May the unknowns become the places where your faith is made sight. May the thrill of trusting God be your daily salvation. And may God surround you with peace when you can't see a single thing. Amen.